Hello again, YouTube. My name is Brie, and in today's video, I'm trying out some new brushes, some new paper, and I'm returning to gouache. So I said in a prior video that I wanted to do some more gouache stuff, especially trying to bring in some of the things I got from the oil painting class and trying that in gouache. And I said I probably wouldn't film that because it's going to be a little experimental. So naturally, I decided to film that because I was very excited to try and I wanted to keep to my video schedule. So yeah, here we go. Um, I do, yeah, I admit it starts out a bit rough. Um, I haven't done gouache in quite some time. I think the last gouache painting I did was back in March and even before then it had been a really long time. So I was extremely out of practice and I kind of started with a more watercolor approach and then remembered what I was trying to do and reeled it in. So I am pretty happy with how this piece turned out, especially since I haven't done gouache in ages and there's some little technical things like the drying shift I had to readjust to, but it definitely has an extended ugly painting phase. So for this video, I am, I said I'm trying out some new brushes. Those are the brushes I showed at the beginning, the Rosemary & Co. Um, Eclipse brushes. They're mostly long combers. I did get a rigger, so I've never used or owned a rigger before, so it's very exciting for me. Um, and then the long combers I have for oil painting, so long handle versions of those, and I tried them out in the very last week of oil painting and fell in love with them. So I wanted to get some short handle versions for using with gouache, and so technically they're not brand new to me, but these specific brushes, it's the first time I'm using them. Um, use them with oil, which totally has a different consistency and they do act a little different. Um, the other brushes I'm using are these green handled ones. They are from Treckle and they're from the, the Obanoth series. They don't make that particular set anymore, but they're just the golden tack one brushes. Um, I've used them a couple times before with bow gouache and um, casein. So they're not brand new to me, but they're still pretty new brushes overall. And then for the gouache, I am using my whole bean paints. They, um, some of them are starting to dry up a little bit, so they need to get used more often, or at least what the paint that's kind of close to the nozzle. Um, but yeah, otherwise just kind of a, my usual split primary with a bonus of white, black, and burnt umber. Um, I don't really use the turquoise blue, but I'm using a stay wet palette. So I still have it sealed up in a couple days. If I haven't used it, I will definitely need to air it out and let it dry so it doesn't mold. But um, I'm planning to do something else very soon with them. So hopefully they're still nice and fresh. I haven't used this palette in quite some time. For me, for the most part, it's just a little bit too much effort to set up. Um, which is just pure laziness. Basically, you take a sheet, you soak it for 15 minutes, then you wet the sponge, wring it out, and it keeps the paint wet. Um, the water evaporates through the semi-permeable layer, and it keeps everything nice and moist, so <laughs> you don't have to work basically with dry, crumbly gouache. It's really nice for that, um, but I do have some problems with it, one of which being that Sometimes it looks like you have more paint than you do and you really have nothing to pick up. Sometimes it gets things, if you leave too much water in it, things stay too watery and you're basically working with watercolor. And then, yeah, I have chronic fear of mold. So there's that too. Um, I, I started with some color mixing. I tried to keep the palette in on the camera for the entire time so you could see what I'm doing if you're interested in that. Also, because I'm working with a square sketchbook and it doesn't take up the whole space. So I started with some color mixing and then decided to go actually do a very loose mapping of what I wanted the shadow areas to be. Um, I said I wanted to try to take what I learned from the gouache class or the oil class and kind of try it with gouache. This is something I really, I should say that this was only really the last couple of weeks for me. Um, I did not react well to my mineral, uh, I, I didn't use the mineral free spirits or that's not the right word. I didn't use gamsol or something. Maybe that was the right word. I used the, the lavender 
spike lavender oil and I reacted very poorly to that. I don't know if it's just too much fragrance or an actual allergy, but I couldn't keep using it. And at the very end of the course, I finally just picked up a couple um, or a tube of like a burnt sienna water mixable oil and I was able to use that as an underpainting and I really like that. So that's kind of what I was trying to replicate at the beginning. Um, and just kind of get a bit of an underpainting in. I know I have a pretty messy sketch, so I already had a sketch there, um, but with the oil paints, I I didn't seal my paint, so it would like pretty much wash off right away. So that like little mapping um, that I did underneath was really helpful. And then from here, I'm trying to go ahead and put in some of the darker values because one of the issues I very consistently have is values and I wanted to try to push some of those right from the beginning. The problem is with gouache and not having used it in a while, it's easy to forget. First of all, I'm not going that dark from the beginning, but um, there's the drying shift. So if I put down something dark, it fades and gets lighter. And then I just kind of start to fumble about <laughs> for a while. So I think it took me about halfway through my first session to really remember what I was doing and stop flailing and then just kind of start to focus again. Part of it was I work with watercolor a lot. It's very easy to maintain like your under sketch um, when you're using more opaque media. It's very easy to cover that up and lose it and then scramble to refine it. Um, so there was a little of that going on too. And then um, yeah, just general flailing. I definitely struggled with the nose and I don't think I quite hit what I wanted to hit on this one. Um, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing in terms of colors and value because the p image I used as a reference didn't actually have the clearest value structure. I know picking a good reference image is usually picking something that has very clearly defined light and dark and I tend to not do that very well. So a little bit of exaggerating and making up as I go along and then the colors were like it was a night scene with artificial lighting so it was kind of blown out a little bit so I'm taking the rough idea of a ref I'm taking a reference image and then trying to apply different colors to it and different slightly different values so yeah it wasn't the most logical choice but I'm having trouble with motivation lately so I'll take what I can get <laughs> So for the brushes, um, I'm really liking working with longer, flatter brushes for gouache and even oils. Um, with watercolor, I'm usually using a quill and I use like a short flat brush to lift or clean up edges. But for the opaque medias, I really like it. And I, I don't know, maybe if I try it with watercolor, I'll like it too, but I'm just really loving these brushes and the long combers are basically a little textured on the edge so there's like I tried to show it in the beginning but they're they're a little jaggedy and it leaves some really nice textures um so I'm, I'm trying to get better about not trying to make everything perfectly pristine and smooth it's okay to have brush marks it's actually very appealing um I'm just a very timid painter and I over smooth everything. So that's one thing I'm aiming for both in oils and gouache. Watercolor, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I like having kind of a well blended, smooth, even, I don't know. It's, we'll see. I'll, I'll land somewhere eventually, I'm sure. But I, yeah, um, I'm trying to be a little bit more, what's the word? aware of my brush strokes and a little bit more decisive in them, especially with the more opaque paints. And that's where I'm really like, when I said I was flailing at the beginning, I wasn't doing that. I think about this point, I start to really hit like, okay, um, for the most part, yeah, let's make this cheek bolder. We're going to do this color and for, let's go ahead and get some values down for the eye. That's good. And I start hitting those a bit more quickly and then I don't have to keep reworking it so much. The nose I really struggled with at this point, I've completely covered up the sketch and I'm trying to like find it again. So that, I, I really struggle with the nose, but everything else at this point, I think it started to move a lot more smoothly for me. Not perfectly, but with practice, I think I'll get to where I wanna be. I, I'm, I just have to be more conscious of all that from the beginning. Um, in terms of, 
yeah that the early flailing state i just need to put down some washi colors in the beginning and then move on from there it'll take a lot of practice for me to get there i'm sure kind of going a little brain dead already but yeah, so this this was a really good sketchbook session for me. I really wanted to try to apply some of those things from the oil class that I really enjoy doing in oils and gouache, and I think I succeeded there. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. I wanted to pull out gouache again, which I haven't done in entirely too long. I have a tendency to use gouache and then like put it aside for ages, and I want to start using it more. I do love the paint. I just, I don't know. There's, um, I don't reach for it as often and I should I don't know why I don't um it did cut out there my camera ran out of battery I'm trying I was trying to prolong the filming time by not having it plugged in because I know that tends to cause it to heat up more but in the second section I did leave it plugged in and it was fine so I think I got the battery or the the camera auto turn off thing fixed so yay, I can still film in 4K and not have it turn off in 25 minutes. So that's good. Um, yeah, I, I over blended the cheeks too, but I was also, there were some pencil marks that were being very stubborn and they kept showing up. I think I just used too much pencil and then not enough paint. So part of that is, like I said, the Stay Wet palette sometimes gives you too much water and the paint isn't as, like I have white in there. It should be a nice thick mix, but it wasn't as opaque as I expected it to be. Part of it's just I don't use gouache enough and I forget things and have to relearn things. Like my watercolor, I know what's more opaque, I know what's more transparent. When it comes to gouache, I kind of start over again. But yeah, um, generally not an overly complicated sketch. I was trying to obviously render out the face and then everything else I tried to keep pretty loose um, just to call it a day. I definitely stayed up too late painting this and then the next morning I wanted to fix a couple of things that stood out to me as things I knew I needed to go back to so um, part of it was kind of the neck um, and then part of it was emphasizing the shadow a bit more in the cheek um, especially on the left side but I turned on the camera and I think I forgot to hit record because I did not record that last I mean it was maybe 10 more minutes so it wasn't that much more but I felt bad that I I lost that bit of filming so like I said I really did enjoy the sketchbook session it's been too long since I used gouache I did while I was flailing in the beginning I really thought this was going to be a mess but uh once I got back to kind of a happy spot I was really enjoying it one thing that's nice about using the stay wet palette is that the values and the relationship between those values stay consistent because you don't have to deal with the drying shift and as long as you could kind of remember where you're pulling from from each section um the drying shift doesn't affect you as much because you know while it might come out super light or super dark when you first put the paint down or you're putting it down you know that when it dries it's going to match so it helps with some of those less those those more subtle changes in value um and makes it a little easier. I don't feel I've completely evolved past fearing the value shift in um, gouache, but it definitely helps when you have your mixing palette kind of set up where you know where you're pulling from and also not having something that's way too many colors. I do have that mix that's way too yellow that I just kind of abandoned and touched for a couple places and then felt bad about it, but oh well. This was a good enough size for what I was doing here today. I, it's kind of how I worked with the oils to have my, like, everything is this ta trail of different colors and different shifts, and I like having it like that, so I don't know, maybe I'll move away from using ceramic palettes where you can't really do that, because this is just a little easier for me. Ah. <sighs> I don't know what else to say. That's pretty much it. I talked a lot about actually painting for once, because I, I put had a plan, kind of, and went for it, so I had more to say then. I just painted something I don't really know, I was just playing around. <laughs> Proud of myself. But yeah, pretty tired, so I'm just rambling at this point. Um, I do... I should, haven't really talked about the paper. The paper is new to me too, it's the Bockingford Rough watercolor paper, and 
Bocking Ferret hat, their cold press paper does have a texture to it, but it's very subtle. So the rough texture is really equivalent to some other companies, um, regular cold press paper. So it was a nice texture for this, especially for some of the marks I do at the end where I really do want a lot more texture to it, but I still want to try like a much rougher texture paper at some point, um, just to see what that's like. While this is technically a rough paper, it doesn't feel particularly rough. Maybe, maybe if I did watercolor, it would settle in differently. I'll do that at one point. I have several pages to play with, so we'll see. I also have more of the black paper, which I need to do gouache paintings on, so that'll be fun too. The problem is it is a cotton paper. This one's cellulose, but the black paper is cotton, so it absorbs a lot more of the, the water, and then you, you have to really build it up more. And I do like to start with nice washy textures, so it's a little different the way to work with it. I've only done one painting on it, and it took, it felt like it used a lot of paint to get to where I ended up. It probably did. Um, yeah, so like I said, um, besides the face, I wanted to keep everything pretty simple, so I should be getting to the, back to the hair at some point, but I, I kept it pretty simple. Um, I used more diluted paint and let the brushes, the long combers, apply a lot more texture so I can bypass and all the work of rendering out the hair. And for the most part, I think that worked pretty well. The larger long combers definitely did a better job of applying the texture, but there was a bit of a learning curve um, that I'll still have to adjust to. Um, and that's basically water control. If there's too much water, the bristles seem to stay together a little bit more so you don't get the texture. So I had to use drier paint and I kept forgetting that, but I'll get there. Um, it was a lot more straightforward for oils because I didn't have um, very loose paint because I was mostly working with it straight from the tube. I don't, maybe I used some linseed oil, but I don't think so. I think I was just mostly working with straight paint. But yeah, I, I really did enjoy the hair. It's simple, but um, I think it worked. And it has some nice textures left in from the brushes and the colors work together. They, they because uh, I, they just layered on top of each other. And then for the, the shoulders, I don't know, I'm just rambling at this point, but I can't think of the right words to use. <laughs> the hair, I think it worked because it really was a lot of more transparent paint with the textured brushes. So it layered up pretty well for what I was trying to do, which wasn't anything, like I said, too detailed. And then for the shoulders, I just wanted to play with the brush textures a bit more and let the painting kind of um, break down into really loose strokes as it went down the page. That way it felt complete without being overly rendered and having a clear cutoff point, partly because I just kind of liked the look and partly because I'm lazy and didn't want to figure out the rest of the painting. So yeah, I something about those brush strokes are really satisfying to me. <laughs> So I think that's about it. Um, like I said, I did do a little bit off camera at the end on the next morning, but I hope you enjoyed that. And I will definitely be doing more gouache and more watercolor and hopefully more oils soon. Uh, in the meantime, hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye.